Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Hey there, what's happening? This is not Chad Benson. This is actually Barsky Radio. Welcome to it. I am Barsky, along with Ron Hersey. Our producer is Garrett, and welcome to the show. And uh, happy Memorial Day weekend. We'll get into all of that, what your plans are, and all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, let me just say from the get-go, um, we filled in for Chad on a couple of other occasions. And maybe some people don't know who we are or what we do. But if you're expecting somebody to uh, be on the air for the next three hours to talk about the trade deal with China <laughs> or uh, you know the infrastructure bill, this is not going to be your show. Okay, it's not gonna not gonna be what you're what you uh, are looking for. But I would think that if you listen to Chad Benson, that's not what you get anyway. You get entertainment. So we're an entertainment show. We do a uh, what I call a humor based variety talk show. We talk about everything and anything. So we'll talk about some political stuff, but we got a whole bunch of other things to throw in there too. So it's a little different. So I just wanted to give you the heads up, give you a chance to bail now if you want. <laughs> But I would say you probably want to hang out because, uh, well, this could be the last time you actually hear the show. (laughs) You never know. Well, I mean, you never know. You never know. I mean, I always always fly without a net. That's just how I've always done it. All right, so you want to uh, kick it off. There's a lot of stuff with the Trumpster. What do you want to start? He he and the First Lady are off to uh, Tokyo. I think they're there now to meet the new emperor. And not only that, but watch sumo wrestling. (laughs) <laughs> and inspect Japan's uh, build-up navy. But the sumo wrestling is actually on the docket, which is quite interesting to me because apparently it's a big, big deal, and they want him to to be there to, I, I guess, preside over some sort of event and give a trophy. Wow. Yeah. It's like a, a big... about rolling out the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he's going to be hanging out with the prime minister, uh Shinzo Abe, and then they give uh, a Memorial Day speech to the troops. So he's going to do that. They're you know they're just breaking bread and uh, just trying to uh, hang out for Memorial Day weekend. But um, he will be treated to it says their cultural events intended to flatter the visiting leader. So whatever. So that, that so you're going to do that. You're going to break out sumo wrestling. <laughs> That's going to do it. Uh, well, maybe it is flat. It is flattering, I guess, because. Well, let me go to fake Trump on the fake phone. Yes, fake Trump. Well, let me just say this. The sumo wrestling is very flattering because I got news for you. After two hours of watching these fat bastards go at it, <laughs> when I get back to the hotel, I'm going to look pretty svelte to the, uh, to the first lady. My love, the love of my life, Melanie. Everybody loves Melanie. I don't think that's necessarily the... Well, I, I, th- I think that supposedly there's, a, there's an award that's going to be given away. That's right. I'm going to be giving a special award away. It's called the, uh, the Trump Award, but you know, they, they, like, they don't like to be called obese or fat, so it's the Trump Plump Award <laughs> for the best super wrestler in Japan, the Trump Plump Award. I'm not sure that's any better, Mr. President. Yeah, I don't think it's any better either. Well, it's better than fat. <laughs> Fatso Award. These boys are big. I mean, they're really big. I got a whole bunch of fat jokes for you if you want me to do them. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll pass on that. But uh, you liking it over there in uh, Japan? It's fantastic. I love it. This is a great country. The people are fantastic. Hopefully we'll have time to, because uh, I'd like to see Godzilla. If he's around. It's been a while. But I'm hoping to see Godzilla. When he comes out, starts running, and they chasing these people, It's there's nothing funnier. Well, I, I don't know if you can necessarily see that, but uh, all right, whatever. So, uh, so, uh, so yeah, the Trumpster is, <clears throat> is out there now, but there's a bunch of other stuff going on. What the hell is happening with him and Pelosi? Oh, man, that, that war of war. It's just gotten really, really bad because and it, it just, it's, it's like schoolyard stuff now, right? Yeah. When it's you like think? throwing insults. I, I would almost hazard to guess someone may be smitten. <laughs> Usually, when you see this kind of give and take, yes, that's what they always told me growing up. Yeah. If she's mean to you, that means she likes you. There's right, some unrequited <laughs> love there somewhere. Right, these two need to get a room and just get it over with. I, I have to think. I think she's smitten. You think? I think yes. I think she's seduced by the power. Mm, I think she's playing him like a fiddle. Is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. So anyway, so uh, Trump tweeted a video about nine o'clock last night of uh, 
of Pelosi. And, and uh, I guess somebody had doctored this video of her speaking that day. Because he's saying, like, she's totally out of it. She's, she's lost it. And uh, she set him off by saying that the family need to do an intervention with him. And what was the other thing she said? That uh, there are a couple other things she threw out there. They need to do an intervention, needed to do this, needed to do that. It just set him off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, uh, he's, just, he's doing a cover-up. Every, or yeah, you know, everything is a cover up. Yeah, now. that one really got under his skin. Right, right. So he just he just went at it. So anyway, he posted something here. It was like Pelosi stammering through a news conference, but they they slowed the video up, or I'm sorry, the audio rather, and you can tell it's obviously doctored. You know when uh, Jimmy is it Kimmel that does the uh, drunk Trump? I think it's Kimmel. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. All right, so it's it's along those lines. Not as bad because when they really slow up Trump. <laughs> Uh, it's it's pretty funny, but uh, here's a little audio of the original uh, Pelosi. Uh, if she was at uh, speaking, and then they do, then they slowed it up. So let's play the original. And then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before. All right, here's the doctor. And one. then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that. Uh-huh. Obviously, were planned long before. I think that's her after like six o'clock. I met her at a gig the other night. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like every drunk woman that comes up to you at some bar gig. Oh, um. <laughs> you know, and they could have really slowed it up even more because it would have been even funnier. But uh, yeah, if you do it too much, it becomes pretty noticeable. Right, just enough. <laughs> they did just enough. But <laughs> I, I, I think, I, like I said, I, I think that, uh, that that's what it sounds like after three or four martinis. At like 5 o'clock when she listens. If you ever wonder what Nancy Pelosi sounds like drunk, that could be it. It was pretty damn funny. But everybody was buying into it. I mean, social media, they were all over it. And it, I guess it was uh, slowed about 75% of the original speed. Three-minute video from the, uh, her, her Wednesday remark at the Center for American Progress Ideas conference. And it was shared. Of course, you know, it was just it went went, viral. went viral. It had been shared like 45,000 times. <laughs> So easy to do stuff like that now because oh, yeah. you nobody questions it. Nobody wants to see. It's like, hey, you're, Nancy Pelosi was was hammered, oh, yeah. and then you know it, it goes around. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's it's getting really kind of. I mean, it's it's like they 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 just have to uh, snip at each other constantly, and if they're not doing that, it's almost like they don't know how to communicate normally. And it all started with the whole thing. They had this this meeting and. They were going to have this infrastructure meeting, and then Trump heard uh, Pelosi making a comment that he was covering up, and he s- supposedly stormed out of there, and he had a tantrum, and uh, he said he didn't have a tantrum. Oh, whenever he was up talking yesterday about, what was it, the farmer relief bill or whatever he was passing, yeah, he had people of, that were at the meeting basically stand up and, and talk about how con- how calm and collected he was yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we went, to, we went to seven or eight people the whole thing is just hysterical it's just getting funnier and funnier, funnier. i don't know about you man but i'm really enjoying season three of celebrity president how I about you it. i love it i want more of it yeah yeah i uh i can't get enough of it i'm hoping for the next uh <laughs> i think this thing goes longer than uh, celebrity apprentice that's, uh, that's the only thing i can hope for as long as he's in i'm on mm-hmm. on the air Exactly, it. exactly. He has been a godsend for this format. I got news for you. So uh, Kellyanne Conway, I guess she's going after Pelosi, too. And she lashed out the House Speaker, treating her like an underling during a uh, dust-up after uh, President Trump's now infamous infrastructure tantrum that they said never happened. Oh, yeah. She got snippy with her yeah. after Trump. <laughs> well, listen what she says here. And, I, you know, and, and when you look at Nancy Pelosi, you can kind of see her being this way. She goes... This is uh, Kellyanne Conway. She says, she treats everybody like they're her staff. She treats me like I'm either her maid or her driver or her pilot or makeup artist driver, and I'm not. But you can see that, right? Yeah, yeah. She's got that. That you know Dominatrix. what I mean? Yeah, everybody. Dom, excuse me. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, I mean, you call her Nancy Lugosi. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, it's a whole thing. I mean, I, I, I say Nancy Pelosi, but we all know it's Lance, uh, Nancy Lugosi, <laughs> Bella Lugosi's uh, sister, Dracula, because we, she's three hundred and seventy years old. Vampire. She's a she's a vampire. Oh, she's, yeah. yeah, yeah, she's a vampire. <laughs> and I also believe that um, that she's got uh, a dungeon underneath the uh, Capitol. <laughs> Did she talk about the jail? She had the, there was like a jail underneath there. I think she's got a, a dark, a dingy dungeon 
where she just, uh... Oh, you've been a bad boy, Chucky. Oh, Get over here, Schumer. You have been a bad boy today. Schumer and a dog collar and a gag ball. You've been bad, haven't you? I'm sorry, mistress. Look, I'll see. I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, Kellyanne Conway is uh, also all over Nancy Pelosi for treating her like uh, like the help. And, uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm thinking about this, too. This the, uh, George Conway, the husband of Kellyanne Conway, he's not letting up. He is uh, continuing to really rip into our president in a big way. And I still can't figure out that, that marriage. I really can't. I mean, I have to think it's probably... You know, similar to the Mary Madeline, James Carville, the lizard man, that marriage. Because like, she was very, very conservative. He was very liberal. I have to think that's just the dance these guys do. You know what I mean? Just to get it uh, get a little hot and bothered. Uh, with their, you know what I mean? It's just what they do. But but when you look at these two, George Conway and then Kellyanne Conway, and you just try to picture what that is all about. Like, no, oh, I don't yeah. want to picture no, what that's all no, about. No, good that's God. I could, could not unsee that. No, no, no. All right, let's uh, take a little bit of a break. <laughs> We're going to come back. When we do, Nevada has dropped the Electoral College, which I think is a brilliant idea. I think that's got to be federal. I think we've got to go nationwide. I, I don't believe we should have a presidential election uh, with the Electoral College. I think it's really, really stupid. We'll talk about that coming up. Barsky Radio for Chad Benson right here. Don't move. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. It is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. I am Barsky, along with Ron Hersey. Our producer is Garrett, and uh, thank you for being here. I am not a fan of the Electoral College. I, I, I don't think it works. I think it's not fair. I have never been a fan of it. And presidential elections should be the popular vote because, at least when I was a kid, I was told that your vote counts. And your vote really doesn't count with the Electoral College. If you're in a blue state and you vote red, what, how's it count? You already know where it's going, vice versa. And uh, I think that uh, when you vote for the presidency, it should be the popular vote. And I think it should be done. Well, look at what Nevada is doing. This is interesting because you really can't dump it. But here's what they're going to do. So Nevada is set to become the latest state to get rid of the Electoral College in presidential elections. And uh, this week, the state Senate voted to join the national popular vote Interstate Compact, a coalition of states pledging to cast their electoral votes for the winner of the popular vote. So they, the electoral votes will go there, but they're going to wait. You know, they're going to wait till after the popular vote, and that's how they're going to do it. So far, 14 states and the District of Columbia have joined the compact, and Nevada would bring the group's vote total up to 195. That's a lot. That's a but, but you would think that once it starts that it's going to sweep and everybody's going to do it because it's stupid. How does it make sense? It doesn't make any sense to me. It well, never I, did. I think it's put in place to avoid fraud, I think, was the whole purpose, uh, you know. Uh, and, and obviously, sometimes it doesn't work. Look at Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And Miami. Also, right. Sometimes, you know. Right. Yeah, I was the, under the impression that it was made to protect the middle of the country because that's where, like, there's less population. And that's normally where it leans more red, right? Yeah. And so if all of the big cities that control a majority of the population of the country are all blue and they're getting all of the you know popular vote votes, then all the people in the middle are not going to have their voice heard because they seemingly don't get a say because they're outvoted by people in New York and people in California. How, wait a second. How about you just do it like this? You just, you know, you, uh, you just do it the way you would do a high school election. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it, it's very scale. simple. <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. I mean, I think the popular vote should win no matter what. Well, you know, if, if, if you're in the middle of the country and you feel you're uncounted, well, then go move to California. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All I'm saying is that it should be the popular vote. I think a lot of people would agree with you, but I think that there's also probably real issues with that. With, like, fraud probably becomes easier. It yeah, probably the, becomes easier. The districting to, sometimes. To but but, but here's, here's my point. My point is that if you're, so, like I said from the beginning, if you're somebody in a blue state and you vote red, you, your vote doesn't count. Why even go out and bother? You already know. It comes down to a, n- a number of swing states when this happens. They need to do it. Seriously. 
They need to do it like American Idol. They, <laughs> Text in your vote. Yeah, it's American <laughs> President. <laughs> yeah, the seriously. last thing we need to do is give Ryan Seacrest another job. No, I mean, seriously, have Ryan Seacrest do it. Trump would be all for that, man. That's right, he does everything else. Hell yeah. We will tell you who the American president is <laughs> right after the break. <laughs> <laughs> It could be a whole season. You could start it off. You get how many Democratic uh, candidates do we have? Like twenty four, twenty five. Okay. All right. So you start it off. You do a whole season. I mean, we're basically living in a reality TV world, are we not? Yeah. So yeah. you start the whole season. You bring all the contestants on, and you have them do different. Uh, you know, have debates or challenges or whatever Town the hell shows. It's be. <laughs> yeah, whatever you're gonna do, you have them do something, and then and then America votes. Bernie Sanders. You are safe. <laughs> Thank God I'm safe. Thank God. I was concerned. I thought I was going to be out. But I'm still in. Thank you. Okay. Do I sing a song next week? No, then, then you have them just vote, vote, and then you just whittle them down. And the final two, that's who it is. You know, it's Trump and Biden. And you have, uh, you know, guest stars on. You have, uh, you know, whatever it's going to be. You know, the, the, the Past coach. presidents get to come on. The coaches, right? Oh <laughs> Bill Clinton's a coach. <laughs> I would do this next time. I would definitely just bite my lip and look at the camera <laughs> and say, I did not have sex with that woman, even if you didn't have sex with her. I give this to you. I would say, Joe Biden, I did not sniff that woman's head. I'm telling you. That's the way it should be. Right. It should be that. It should be uh, like American <laughs> Idol. By the way, um, Prime Minister uh, Theresa May quit today. She basically says she's done uh, June 7th. So they could do that, too. It's Prime Minister Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Cowell could host that. I don't know what's the bigger story. Is it that Theresa May quit? Or it's that Adam Levine is out on The Voice. <laughs> That's the bigger story today. Since we're talking about uh, singing competitions. Yeah, 17 seasons, he got kicked out. So, I don't know he got kicked out, but he was done. All right, Barsky Radio for Chad Benson coming back. Stay right here. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. No, it isn't. It's Barsky Radio. That's who it is. Chad has got the uh, night off. Thanks for being with us. We do appreciate it. Well, um, Washington State has legalized the use of, ready for this? Dead humans for composting. What? Making it the first state to do Oh my to gosh. do so, anything. So, uh, is it legal? Is uh, is weed legal in Washington? I think it is, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, this they actually plant a seed, right? Don't they put a seed in your in like your chest or something yeah. like that? Yeah, and then they just and you can they just right. smoke you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it says here Washington has legalized the use of dead humans for compost. They make into the first state in the country. The new law, which goes into effect May twenty twenty makes natural organic reduction of legal means of fertilizing and disposing of loved ones. While the environmentally conscious state uh, already has green cemeteries, really? They bury people without caskets? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it makes sense. So, wait, wait a second. I'm just, um, like, what happens? It's, uh, Uncle Fred dies. What is he just, he's embalmed and he's sitting there in his suit and you just toss him? <laughs> well, like, how does that work? What do you mean they don't use caskets? Well, I mean, you would dig a hole still. You would be, you would put him down in the dirt rather than in, like, a wooden box. It's like 1812. Him. Yeah, and then you just cover him up. It makes sense. I mean, it's, I we're all going to de decompose anyway. Might as well not taint the earth with boxes while we do it. It's just I've weird. Never, I've never understood the putting off the... The decay, anyway, if you're going to bring it up. I mean, what's the point? You're yeah. gone. What are they keeping you around for? It's right. Not, it's not like they can see you. You're still not, you're under the ground. And I, and the other thing is I never understood on, on top of the casket, yeah. then they put it in like a, like a, like a little mini crypt. 
Yeah. Hmm. So legally, they have to. I guess it's a. I get maybe it's a health. I guess you can't have like a whole <laughs> a whole town full of <laughs> right buried bodies decaying. It's just really really weird. <laughs> of course, you know it would be cheap rent. Right. <laughs> Hey, listen, the cost of dying is uh, it's gone way, way up. Yeah, man. I mean, they get you. These funeral homes and these directors, They, uh, if you don't have any costs, I mean, you don't have any money put away to do this. I mean, they're going to, and it's, it's, it's. Prices it's are just, insane. It's a shakedown. It's a scam. Yeah. Put me on they, a bonfire and just have everybody have like a beer around my, my corpse while I burn. Well, I've always That's said I that I, uh, I plan to be cremated. And uh, maybe I need to go to Washington because I, I just said what, what I would, or maybe in Colorado, and I would uh, like to be, you know, cremated and then just throw me in a, like a big, big box full of weed and just smoke me out. <laughs> you know, you could do that. So I'm surprised, that's, I'm surprised they're not doing that. Up in the funeral too. world, that's known as the Willie Nelson. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take the Willie Nelson, please. Can I, can I interest you in the $50,000 casket? No, we're going all Willie Nelson. <laughs> If you don't mind. Seriously. Yeah, we're going Willie Nelson. <laughs> right. So anyway, so these green cemeteries, no caskets, no headstones. They're not even embalming the body. So that means they got to, once you're gone, they got to throw you in the ground quickly. All natural. Yeah. Yeah. Like my people, the tribe. <laughs> right. We don't like to wait around, us <laughs> Jewish folks. Boom, right in the ground. The new law paves the way for organic reduction funeral homes. Yeah, I have to think that the uh, the old school funeral directors in the homes they, they can't be on board with this one because it takes away a lot of uh, a lot, lot of business, money. Yeah, yeah, a lot of business. Because anybody could do this. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, you, you dig a hole. God, the mob must love this. Because <laughs> well, they've been doing this for years. Pioneers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, man. If you uh, take a drive down. Uh, Broad Street in Philadelphia, Ugh. you'll see lined up down Broad Street, funeral home after funeral home, and it's all Italian funeral homes. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, it's a big, big industry, at least uh, up there in Philly, I'm sure, you know, in some of the other major cities. Might as well capitalize on all that market you're making. Right. So they could just change it all up, and instead of having, you know, the old school, they could just, you know, do it the way, uh, you know, their, co- their first cousin does it. Let's just put it that way. Just put a seed in the bullet. You dig a hole. You dig the hole. <laughs> Right? Goodfellas style. I'm going to go for the Goodfellas. Should anyone do the Willie Nelson? Nah, I'm going Goodfellas. I'm a big fan of that movie. They're just going to dig a hole and throw me in it. According to the experts, the process will be similar to cremation, except uh, instead of using fire to reduce the bodies to ashes in minutes, they'll use wood uh, wood chips. Oh, how uh, how very, uh, very West Coast. <laughs> wood chips. Mesquite? Would you like mesquite or not? Mm, I don't know if I'm ready for mesquite. Wait. Well, it's your last uh, go round. What, what the have? hell? Uh, you know, let's go all out, mesquite. Spare no expense. It is my death. Right. What are you having a nice hickory? Yeah. <laughs> a nice hickory mesquite. Is that okay? Yeah. What, what the hell? Let's just do a barbecue around it. Why not? That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's take, have a bonfire. Take care of me and then throw burgers on there. What the hell? Why should everybody starve? <laughs> Why not? So they'll use the wood chips and straw to do the same thing in, uh, in about four weeks, it says it takes to, to do all that. Why so long? Four weeks? Well, that's what it says here. Really? Yeah. No way. I don't know. Maybe there's a, there's a process we don't know about. It just seems like you could just get it done quicker. You I know? don't know that. Since uh, hmm. I'm, on the, I'm on the topic uh, of this, would you be interested in seeing a, uh, a Whitney Houston perform again? Not like you've ever seen her, but I mean... Uh, if you could see her, would you be interested? Because she is now the number two artist that this company has decided oh. uh, they may want to take on tour for the hologram tour. Okay. Who was the first one? Uh, Roy, Roy Orbison. Orbison. Oh. Yeah, I saw the the uh, video to that. It could have been one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. <laughs> they let me tell you. Let me explain. Let me explain what the uh, Roy Orbison hologram concert looked like to me. Okay, so. I'm looking at the video, and the announcer, you know, the crowd, it's packed, by the way. And it's, it's all people like wow. 75 to 90. I was going to say, yeah, right. of course it's packed. Right. <laughs> they got nothing to do. Right. <laughs> and they're not far away also from where Roy Orbison is, really. You know, wow. they, it's probably their last show. You know what I mean? Well, see you soon, Roy. This is really just a preview. Yeah. Yeah. See yeah. you soon, Roy. Yeah, right. Right. It, it, it may be a hologram on stage, but there's a meet and greet after the show. <laughs> right. Yeah, and they're all going. All of them. Right. And it's not going to be the meet and greet here. They're going to go to the big VIP room in the sky. 
that's what's going to happen. But they, they all know that. But I, but I guess you know they were they were fine with it because they're thinking, all right, well, let's just take a look and see what it's going to look like when we head up there. Because I got to tell you. The, the, they're playing the music and they doom, 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 doom. They're playing Pretty Woman and the announcer's like, "You've been waiting to see him for many years. Now you can, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Roy Orbison." And as they say, Roy Orbison, rising from the orchestra pit. <laughs> Is this this beam of light, <laughs> and it's Roy Orbison, and it's like a cross between like a human body and a ghost. It's a if, hell you of could, an interest, if you could, if you could picture what it looks, but you just see him rise. You just see the top of his head, and he just keeps growing. It's the freakiest thing, and it's in 3D. I mean, it's like, holy crap, it's Roy Orbison, but it's not the solid figure. It's it, it, <laughs> Slightly it, transparent. Yeah, slightly transparent. It's what you, you would think a ghost would look like. You know what I mean? Like a... You know, like a decent, a decent ghost. If there was a, a live band on stage, you could see the drummer through him. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you something. They had, they had the band behind. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't wow. to a karaoke track. No, they had the band playing, <laughs> and it was all synced up. And there's you know, a, There's a gig. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty woman walking down. Yeah, and, and he's, he's singing up a storm, and the crowd is going crazy. And, uh, and it's the, after the song, he just bows and uh, then and starts up another song. Wow. Does, when it's over, does he disappear back into the orchestra pit? Yes, he does. <laughs> I'm saving that the best for last. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Seriously, the song is over, and it's like <laughs> he plays like the last song, and all of a sudden you just see him like just shrinking. Oh, he just no. shrinks and disappears into the stage, like the bottom of the stage. Oh man! It is because he can't walk off. Right. <laughs> it's not even there. It's are a hologram. We, it's stupid. Are we sure it's an actual hologram and they didn't just go find his ghost to perform? Well, I'm telling you, man, uh, if if it wasn't a hologram, yeah, I would have believed it was his ghost. It looked that. It was, if, once you got past the creepy portion of it and you were like, oh, okay, what, what am I looking at? Mm-hmm. Then then you were like, okay, you know, if I'm a fan. So I could see people. I could see a whole, like a concert. I could see. Uh, yeah. Like a Woodstock. <laughs> It's Corpse of Palooza. <laughs> All your favorite dead people. Elvis, Jimi Hendrix, Michael Jackson, Prince, Kurt Cobain, Janet Joplin, <laughs> Jim Morrison. They're all here for one special night. Corpse of Palooza. <laughs> why not? Oh. Why not? Why not? But they, I think they have to get... And the reason why they haven't done all that, because they have to get the permission from the family, oh, from the course. estate... And I'm sure half of them probably said no. I'm sure they've asked everybody. Yeah, I mean, you would. Could you imagine what the Elvis one would do, or the Michael Jackson one would do? I mean, the, what kind Same of business? They, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Roy yeah. Orbison thing made some money. I mean, right. yeah, but but they've but they've perfected it to where it really looks. Like almost real. Not that they would ever do it, but it would be really cool to see a Beatles reunion, half and half. Yeah, yeah. If you could get like a Ringo and Paul get up on stage, right, and then you bring the other two and just George shock the hell out of everybody. <laughs> could you imagine? Oh my God, with the money that would make! Wow. All right. So since we're on the topic of music, I got to mention this. I thought it was over, and uh, I guess they're bringing it back. So Woodstock fifty. We're coming up on the fiftieth anniversary of Woodstock. It uh, was in August. Is that on again? It is on again, believe it or not. What oh a dumb God. idea. Yeah. I, you know, the, the original organizers decided that they were going to do another Woodstock, and they thought it would be really wow. cool to do a 50th anniversary. And I understand the concept behind it because, yeah, 50 years is a big deal. But unless you can get the, you know, some of the original artists on that stage, it's not Woodstock. Well, not too many of them are around. No, there's, like, there's like three of them around. I think it's Santana, John Fogarty, and David Crosby. I think that's it. Well, I was going to say, CS and Y aren't talking to each other, no, so that, that ain't going to happen. No, I, I was looking at the lineup. It's David Crosby and Friends, <laughs> which is shocking that he has any friends, to be quite honest with you. He was just... I think that he's touring with his fa- his daughter. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, he is or not. Se- it's some member of his family, I think. Let me tell you, but, but it's not Woodstock if you're going to say, you know, like, let's bring her to the stage right now. Miley Cyrus. That's not Woodstock. <laughs> That's not the idea. Woodstock was actually, 
you know, it was the culmination of the one of the most tumultuous decades in our in human existence. From you have to admit, from 1960 to 1969, there were so many things that happened in that decade that changed everything politically, socially, uh, all of it. And it was the culmination of all that, 1969. Well, I mean, yeah. it's not like we're not kind of in a bit of a tumultuous period right well, now. Well, yeah. no, but it's just think, things really happened in a hurry. Yeah. I mean, we went from doo-wop to Jimi Hendrix in yeah. less than 10 years. Yeah, it's just not going to be the same. It's just like, uh, <laughs> let's bring on to the stage Earl Sweatshirt. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Amigo the Devil. Who? Sucker mommy. I mean, these are some of the acts oh, really? that are going to be on it. Yeah. Oh, are these yeah. real? I thought you were making these. No, up. Yeah. no, no. These are real acts. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't see Santana really enjoying the, sharing the stage with soccer mommy. <laughs> well, I don't know what she looked like. Uh, well, I guess we can always see. It's, it's still on. All right, uh, we're coming back. When we do, I'll tell you, give you a little uh, news on Julian Assange. I guess there's some, some more charges that he's got to answer to, and then the Trumpster. I believe he is going to get his own radio stations in the Florida Panhandle. I'll tell you all about that coming up. Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Don't move. Stay here. Got that sniffling, sneezing, stuffy head thing going on? Time for your daily dose of vitamin Chad. Chad has got the night off. He's uh, celebrating Memorial Day weekend. We are Barsky Radio filling in for Chad. I am Barsky, along with Ron Hersey. Our producer is Garrett. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Julian Assange has been uh, charged with, in the U.S. with 17 violations of the Espionage Act for conspiring with Chelsea Manning. This just came down uh, yesterday. A federal grand jury returned the indictment against him in Virginia. Now the 47-year-old WikiLeaks founder faces how many years behind bars? 170. Wow. Ooh. That's a lot. Uh, 17 of the 18 charges are violations of the Espionage Act. And uh, they are one count of conspiracy to receive national defense information, eight counts of obtaining national defense information, eight counts of disclosure of national defense information, and it goes on and on and on and on. You, gonna ever, you think you're ever going to see him here? Hell no. <laughs> Not going to happen. I mean, that guy was on the land for how many years? In that uh, that uh, was it like seven or something Ecuadorian like embassy where he didn't shower for like six of them. It was not just that he didn't shower. It was... He did a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I, the whole thing to me is I, I can't, uh, I still can't wrap my mind how he was able to uh, escape any sort of um, imprisonment. I mean, he's in jail now, but uh, he's still over there, right? I mean, he's still in uh, he's in England. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think he's been... But, I mean, Sweden wants to uh, get him over there to answer some sexual assault charges, some rape charges. So, uh, so how many countries is he not wanted in? I feel like that's a shorter <laughs> list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't know. I mean, um, Pam Anderson st- uh, seems to be able to get over there to see him. What the hell is that all about? <laughs> Conjugal visit. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but, I mean, she bringing, bringing him food. She was bringing him food from Whole Foods and... She, uh, I saw a, a quote from her today. She said, uh, you know, he's not going to be here. You'll never see him here. It's not going to happen. It's, it's a crime. You know, she's decided that she's going to make this her cause celeb, but I think it might be something more to it. You know, just, I, I have to think too, if you're Julian Assange and you just hold up in that, that embassy with nobody to talk to, you know, here comes, uh, uh Pam Anderson with the Whole Foods bag. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, I hope you're bringing something more than just food, honey. Did he reach out to her or did she no, just, like, she, find him? No, she found him. She was all about him. That's yeah. weird. The whole thing is weird. That's pretty sweet, though, all that and a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, what more could you ask yeah, for? Yeah, but I, I could see him being a guy being very demanding, like, no, I asked for buffalo mozzarella on this sandwich. It's Whole Foods, right? Come on, woman. What the hell? She probably likes that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, WikiLeaks editor-in-chief uh, Kirsten <laughs> said in a tweet, I find no satisfaction in saying I told you so to those who for nine years have scorned us uh, for warning that this moment would eventually come. I care for journalism. Is what he did journalism or was it with espionage? He helped Chelsea Manning break into that computer and get those, those military secrets? Yeah, well, it depends on who you ask as yeah. whether it's journalism or not. Right, right, right. Yeah, if you ask Pam Anderson, he should get the Pulitzer Prize, you know. But anyway, the U.S. has until June 11th to submit 
its case to the U.S. to extradite uh, Assange. So there you go. All right, so a little quick little uh, thing here. Uh, in Florida, the Sunshine State, they've announced that um, there are a group of radio stations that are going to be going, uh, putting Trump speeches on their radio stations. And they're not talk stations. There's a company called Gulf Coast Media, which owns three stations, Classic Rock W, RBA, Country, uh, WKNK FM, Hank FM, and Adult Hits, WASJ, Bob FM. And these outlets will broadcast two-minute snippets around the clock, 24-7 Trump. (laughs) With the music, too. <laughs> fake Trump on the fake phone. Yes, fake Trump. I got some programming ideas. First of all, the hell with the Bob FM, okay? We're going Donald FM. Come on, make sense. Come on. I'm not even a, a programmer, all right? Donald FM, and with the Hank FM, you're going to make that Trump FM, all right? So you need to go Donald FM. You need to go Trump FM. A couple other ideas. Two for Trump Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Two for Trump Tuesdays. I got a whole bunch of other. Art of the deal, give away the book every hour. I mean, come to me. I'm like a consultant. Yeah. <laughs> this is like his, this is his dream come true. All right, Barsky for Chad Benson. Stay right here. Don't move. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. No, it's not. It's Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Chad's got the weekend off. He's going to enjoy my old day uh, weekend. Uh, I am Barsky, along with Ron Hersey. Our producer is Garrett. Thank you for having us in, uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate it. So I got a couple stories here. I'm going to tie them all together. And uh, we're in the Me Too era of this country. And uh, it's, how long has this thing been going on, by the way? Who who was the pioneer? Who who kicked this thing off? Was it, was it Weinstein? Yeah, which, by the way, he's like reached, they may yeah. have reached a big settlement. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Um, yeah, I think he's, uh, you know, when, when we look at the legacy of a, of a Harvey Weinstein, you know, we won't be looking at Miramax or any of the films. We'll be looking at the fact that he was, you know, the pioneer, the father of the Me Too movement. And uh, so, uh, so before we get to him, it was the reason for the. <laughs> well, yeah. we, before we get to him, there was this uh, this uh, sex cult in New York, upstate New York, Nexium, Nexvum. It sounds like a shampoo, but it's N X I V M. It's weird, and uh, so they're going through these trials, and it's this cult, uh, this this Svengali guy by the name of Keith Rainier. He, for some reason, was able to convince a bunch of women that this was a self-empowerment uh, group. And he was able to get not only just anybody, in there, you know, he, he got some famous people or, or people who actually had some fame. He got the, the chick from Smallville, Allison Mack. She was one of the recruiters. They got the, one of the heirs to the Seagram fortune. She got involved. Claire Bronfman, I think her name is. So it wasn't just like the wayward runaway uh, girls or women. It was these well-to-do, well-off, uh, well-accomplished uh, people who got involved in this this weird, just bizarre cult. Oddly, you wouldn't think those kind of women would be in desperate need of empowerment. That's what I'm saying. That's what I don't understand. I mean, if you're if you're on a television series, you pretty much made it, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, we've heard you. We just talked about the Me Too stuff. Maybe they were needing empowerment because of the work environment. I mean, it's not like Hollywood has been the nicest to females in the past. Nah, I think this Alison Mack was just a freak. <laughs> I think that she's just she was just freaky, and she was into this. It, it was it's it was almost like a satanic thing because they would they would brand these women. With his initials and all of that, and uh, so and and Allison Mack, one of her duties was to go out and recruit, and bring these women to this guy Keith Rainier, who was the Charlie Manson, the the, the new school Charlie Manson. It's kind of like that type of a thing. So 
Yeah, so you have those people involved, and now they're speaking out. They're trying to save themselves from going to jail for a long time. And now there's more information coming out about this Keith Rainier. I'm thinking, how does this guy, if you saw the guy, I mean, he's, he's not an ogre, but I mean, you're just like, what did he, what did he have over these women? What, what kind of uh, voodoo? What kind of thing? And apparently he had something. And um, that so, voodoo that you do so well. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, it seems to me like there were some drugs involved and a lot of that other stuff. But the front page, and I go to go to New York, because this comes out of New York, the Daily News, it says, sex cult's weakest member. The weakest member of the sex cult. You know what he was talk- they were talking about? Apparently, this guy had erectile dysfunction issues. <laughs> it's Keith Rainier. Wait, the head of the sex cult? The head of the sex cult. He makes a sex cult for himself and can't... Uh, oh, my God. Can't uh, finish, finish the session, if you will. Talk about overcompensating. Feel the deal. Can't seal the deal. Yeah, you think wow. you go to all that trouble to get these women to come in and uh, perform sexually, and you can't perform sexually. That is got that's. When you talk about karma, whatever you want to believe in, how funny is that? This guy goes to all this trouble to 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 go through all of it, create all these programs, all these empowerment programs to scam these women to believe that. You know, they can be empowered and they're in charge of them, you know, their lives and this and that just to get them in bed. And they get him, she gets him in bed and it's like, Woo! can't get it done. It's just, I, I found it to be very, very funny. So, all right. So you did mention Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein has agreed to a $44 million deal to settle these lawsuits with alleged victims of uh, his behavior. And uh, he still uh, has to answer to a criminal charge, but he's trying to get this these uh, civil uh, cases settled. Forty-four million dollars. It's a lot of money. Well, it's coming from insurance policies. Yeah, he doesn't have to pay. What? Yeah, no, that's why. That. So yeah, that's why he's so happy about Hell it. This guy yeah. took on insurance policies because he was a harasser. I'm confused. How is insurance paying for this? I, I don't know. I haven't seen the policy. I'm sure there know. is. I'm sure there's in a closet, closet there. If you happen to uh, walk out of the bathroom in your bathrobe. <laughs> Open and uh, you know make a move on a woman. We will protect you. Know, no, I, I just wonder what policy has sexual offense listed under the coverage. That's all. That probably has to be New York Life and Hefner, <laughs> a New York Life and Hefner company. I don't know. All I know, the settlement cash will include thirty million to his alleged victims, also to former uh, Weinstein Company employees and creditors because he owes a lot of money there. A lot of and, people lost a lot of money thanks to that whole thing too. Yeah, a lot of lawyers. Uh, so he's so he's you know trying to. Even that out now. Another fourteen million will go to the legal fees of uh, like his associates and all of this stuff. So the um, the money comes from these insurance policies. And a lawyer for Weinstein's brother, studio co-founder Bob Weinstein, told a bankruptcy uh, bankruptcy judge in Delaware of this deal. Bob Weinstein is the only smart one in this deal because I don't think he has been involved in any of it. It was Harvey's thing. But, you know, you leave a legacy. If, if he's leaving any sort of legacy, it's what's now known as the Weinstein. It's known in Hollywood. If you're uh, an ingenue, if you're an actress, you're trying to get a gig, and, uh, you know, you, you're asked to come to do an audition at a hotel room, they'll say to you, oh, I hope it's not a Weinstein. hope he doesn't pull the Weinstein on you. And the Weinstein move is the guy walking out of the bathroom with the bathroom out. Open and and that's all that's on and that's all that's on yeah, and uh, so anyway so everybody's getting paid off. My question is this: How much does the potted plant get? <laughs> does the potted plant get anything? You know that story, right? I don't I don't know if I initially have to tell it, but please don't. Yeah, Google it. You'll know what I'm. You'll you'll get the joke if you Google it. Okay, so I have always said, "Where there's smoke, there's fire." When I talk about these things, I've always said that. Now, last. I don't know. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was early in the week. There was news that uh, self help guru. Since we're talking about some Svengali's and gurus, Tony Robbins. Yes, everybody knows him, right? Tony Robbins been at this game, the self help game for. Oh my God, it's got to be well over thirty years, right? He's made a fortune, millions and millions of dollars, and uh, he's a probably the most mo- uh, famous motivational speaker out there. Well, early in the week. Three women came out and said that he was inappropriate with them, and his conduct was inappropriate, and uh, he tried to make a move on one of them, and he did the old, 
uh, Weinstein move back when there wasn't a Weinstein move, but he too was coming out. Maybe it's just a Hollywood move where you just come out of the bath, uh, bathroom with the, uh, with the bathrobe on. Anyway, so when there's one, I go, all right, sounds like a spurned lover. It could be, you know, that type of thing. If it's two, I'm like, okay, well, maybe they're in cahoots. Three, um, now you got my attention, right? Okay, well, four more women have come out. Wow. I told you, when there's smoke, there's fire. It always happens this way. It happened with Weinstein. It happened with Cosby, all these, all these, all these people. Because people now feel like they can speak up. They feel like they're, they're going to be encouraged. They're yeah. going to be believed because there are others who came forward. So the latest accusations brings the total to nine women. I would say nine women from different eras seems to be pretty believable, wouldn't you say? Sure. Nine women who have made similar accusations, collaborated without knowing one another, accusations that span three decades. Ooh. This is according to BuzzFeed News. Kimberly Stokes lived with Robbins as his personal assistant when she was 22, told BuzzFeed News that he once sauntered into her bathroom naked but for a towel while she was in the shower. He then dropped the towel and uh, she yelled and said, leave. Okay, so that's that one move. In 91, at a uh, Hawaii seminar, Robbins reportedly pulled the hand of Sophia Kokus onto her, his crotch as well as groping her breast. BuzzFeed reported this, that uh, Mayor Myra Lance, who attended one of the events in Ohio around 1990, said she was sexually harassed with unwanted kissing, hugging, and touching of the breasts. And then there's another woman, Lucy Galvez, the fourth woman, told BuzzFeed she turned down a job with Robbins because the sexually inappropriate, almost predatory interview contains questions such as, how do you feel about nudity? How do you feel about my nudity? <laughs> All right, so... There's nine women now. I, I have to ask this question, though. But when something like this happens, does that negate all the good things that this guy has done for people? Because he really has helped. I mean, I know people that took his uh, course and said it was life-changing. So the guy's a scumbag. We know that, right? Sure, it, it, yeah. it, it seems to me like that's what these women are saying. Well, we but, all but, are, right, actually. But, yeah, well, not, <laughs> yeah, no, you don't can't. Let me yeah, in don't, guys. don't let Come me on. in with this either. <laughs> I don't even have a cult. Let me get a cult first. <laughs> then you can love me in. But uh, but I I have to wonder that the people who actually gained some you know some some good experience from this guy and uh, and and he, he changed their lives. I mean, there's like hundreds of thousands of people who've attended his his seminars. Do you just not dis- discount that? Did you just I mean- like? A lot of people struggle with this with Cosby too because he had successful TV shows. He's a com- a stand-up comedian. You people don't really have to it. bring me into this conversation <laughs> and lump me in. Why is it every time that somebody touches a boobie, I get lumped in? I, I, see. I think there's an argument to be made that you have to be able to learn to separate the art from the artist. I can't do that. That's my problem. Yeah, I mean, not I never, a lot of people can. Yeah, I never was a, a Cosby fan to begin with. Anyways, it wasn't much of a uh, <laughs> a big uh, sacrifice for me. You know, what I mean, I never really got it from the beginning. But uh, but Tony Robbins now is under fire, not just for this, but now of course things are starting to come out. There supposedly is a video of him using the N word in the eighties. Oh jeez, there's always one out there. <laughs> Floating around. Always one inward tape. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, isn't Tom Arnold searching for the the <laughs> Trump inward yeah. tape? Right. <laughs> There's always one out there. But what, are you, I'm going to play some of that. I'll play a little sample of it. Of course, it's bleeped out, so you're not going to get the full effect. Oh, so it's going to be like All in the Family and uh, the Jeffersons. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Was there any? Yeah, uh, I couldn't they, believe they bleeped out. Yeah. They did the inward the other night. They, yeah. They they did it live, but they bleeped it on television. Interesting. On television. Yeah. Interesting. They, All right. They, they could do it live in uh, the 70s, but they can't do it now. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'll <laughs> play a little bit of that coming up. It's Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Stay right here. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. Barsky Radio, in for Chad Benson. Hope you're having a good uh, day today. 
Trump says he's disclassified potentially millions of pages of documents from the Russia investigation. He's, um, this is related to the origins of the conduct of the Trump-Russia investigation. He's addressing the media. He addressed the media today, actually, and touted his decision to give the Attorney General Bill Barr full and complete authority to declassify information related to the origins of the federal investigation into possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. He just wants it all out there. He wants it done. He wants it out. Let's get done. Let's move on. He's tired of hearing about it. I get it. I, I totally get it. Uh, what do you think he's doing right now in Japan? Is he, just, is he having... Uh, Have the sumo matches started yet? I don't be- <laughs> believe yet. Is there a Benihana in Japan? <laughs> I'm sure they've got better than Benihana. <laughs> Boy, could you imagine? Could you imagine? We're going to take you now to a very uh, a very authentic... Uh, uh, a Benny Hot is called. <laughs> what? What? I come out like, what? All right, so before we uh, took a little break there, we were talking about Tony Robbins, the self help guru, Tony Robbins, who has been accused now by now nine women of sexual uh, inappropriate behavior. He has uh, amassed millions and millions and millions of fans and dollars to go with that. He is one of the, probably the most famous that I know of in the last 30 years, uh, inspirational, motivational guys. And, but sometimes these guys, though, they get the God complex. And they think they're infallible. And they think they can do anything. I mean, I have to think that uh, that might have been the case with this. Like I said, if it was just one woman or two, I'd be like, all right, sounds like a shakedown. There's nine from different decades and that's nine too many. You shouldn't be doing any of that stuff. But that's what the, some of these guys, they think, hey, listen, I can, I can do what I please. I mean, people treat them. When, when I've seen people in some of these videos with Tony Robbins, they, they, they treat him like he's the Messiah, like, you know, like Jesus returned. Yeah. They'll faint in front of him. I mean, you know, he's doing everything but healing people, you know, doing that. But, um, and he's very, um, he's very uh, larger than life, if you will. So uh, I, the, the, once this stuff starts where the uh, women are accusing him, then everybody starts searching for the old videos. They also, you know, the old right. VHS. This looks right. like this was recorded on VHS <laughs> from 86 or whatever it is. It's like right, right kind of when he started. So anyway, Tony Robbins, as he's, I guess he's doing his thing, and he's lecturing an African-American audience, full black audience, and he's t- telling them how to respond to racism. Wow. Here's this big six foot five Frankenstein looking uh, <laughs> white guy <laughs> telling a, telling a, a, a an entire audience of m- mostly black people how to handle racism. I understand what he was going for, but he. Well, I, I'll just I'll just play I'll just play it. You can't really get the full effect of it because we've had to bleep out the n word. But he's basically looking at a man straight in the eye. He says he says I can look at you and say the n and he says the word the n word. And during which he noted the crowd reacted angler, angrily. You know, they were kind of like, are you think? Yeah, they were like, <laughs> I could say the N-word and boom. And, uh, well, here's a little sample. How's a man to look at you and say, the whole room went, As long as somebody can do that, as long as somebody's called you if that kind of response I see in you right now, when you're ready to explode, then what you've done is given that person absolute control of you. You have no control in your life. You are still a slave. <laughs> I said, you are. Well, you're being enslaved by you and nothing else. And I said, I'd like to have you be free because I'm free and I'm white. So why don't you pretend that we're going to get you free right now? I suggest here's the way to do it. Everyone, stand up. I said, stand up. Come on, try something with me. Trust me, just for a moment, pretend I'm black. I get them to stand up, right? Now I'll stand up. I said, now you guys just do what I do just for a minute if you really want to be free and if you want to have some fun. So let's try this. I stood up and I said, okay, follow me. Do what I say, say what I say, move the way I move. I'm <laughs> your I'm surprised none of that happened. <laughs> so basically, he's stepping, he goes, I'm an N, you an N. This is the Dr. Pepper thing. Oh, my God. I'm surprised he got out of there alive. <laughs> Barsky Radio for Chad Benson right here. <laughs> the Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. No, actually, it's Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Uh, I'm Barsky, and Ron Hersey's with us as long as we're doing this show. Why not have Garrett come on in? That's our producer. Welcome to the program. So, uh, by a large majority, Americans want Special Counsel Robert Mueller and former White House Counsel Don McGahn to testify before Congress. This is according to a Monmouth University poll that was released this week. I have to wonder, does Robert Mueller even exist? <laughs> have we ever seen him in the same place at the same time? I, I mean, I, I know I've seen pictures of him, but it's, it's almost like if he came out and testified, I expect him to look like Robert De Niro from SNL from, from that bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but apparently 73% of those surveyed say the, uh, that Mueller should appear before Congress to answer the questions about the, the, the investigation of the Trump, uh, Trump campaign's ties to Russia. So, and as for McGahn, 67% of those surveyed said that he uh, should testify about the answers provided for Mueller's report. And that number included a majority of 70, I'm uh, sorry, 90% uh, Dems, Independents 65%, and the Republicans 41%. Wait a minute. 90% Democrats and 60 and 40. 65 independents. That doesn't make up 100. I'm confused. I, I, I don't know. I don't get the, get these numbers from. I'm just, I'm just reading it. <laughs> Doesn't have to add up exactly. <laughs> Mueller has been in uh, negotiations with the Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee as well with the uh, Justice Department officials. Apparently, he wants to, he wants to testify because I think he's tired of hearing people badger him about uh, you know sitting down and you know giving the information up that he's got, but he wants to do it in private. Now, listen, I don't, uh, I think, why not do it publicly? Everything else has been public. You know what I mean? Just sit down and uh, get it out. And this way, no one's going to bug you about it. Say what you know and be done with it. But as long as you don't do it, people are going to be hounding you. I have to think he's in hiding. Does anybody, does, you know, normally TMZ is very good at getting photos of people <laughs> or getting video of people. Uh, so what do you want the paparazzi to start following this guy around? I don't I'm think confused. he. I don't think. I think he sees in like uh, he's holed up in uh, some sort of quarantined. Uh, maybe maybe he's b- below the Capitol somewhere. I don't <laughs> in, know where he is. In Pelosi's dungeon, maybe. I, maybe I don't know. I don't know where he is. But apparently, uh, he wants to do it, but he's negotiating. So he's trying to get it over with, and he's trying to figure out how to get it done. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, just be done already. You know, I'm sick of hearing about it. I want to know what he knows. I want to hear McGahn. And then done. Uh, you know what I mean? Let the chips fall where they may. I mean, well, Trump's I'm, not going to allow it. Trump's not going to want it. I don't think McGahn's going to do it. But Mueller wants to do it. Trump has no say over what Mueller does or not. But right? I'm sure if he does do it, it's not going to end it. It's not like we're going to get a resolution. If anything, I bet it makes us have to talk about it more. Mm. Because I'm sure he'll say things like, you know, he, he I think he said basically the week after uh, – Barr came out and said, you know, all of the stuff about the report when he summarized it, quote unquote. Mueller came out and basically said, that's not what I wrote. You're misrepresenting me. Well, that's why he wants to actually get in front of a uh, committee and say, here's what I meant. Here's what I wrote. Here's what blah, blah, blah. Here, here, here's all of it. And, and, now, and now I'm done with it. Now I wash my hands. Yeah, I mean, maybe he will. But at that point, I'm sure that's when, you know, the Dems in the House and, and the Senate were going to start calling for more and more people to testify and more and more consequences to fall out of it. So be it. But here's the thing, though. I mean, how many subpoenas have they, have they sent out? Nobody's answering them. No one's listening to them. Mueller is voluntary. He's, I want to do it. I want to get it done. But I want to do it privately. So we'll see. All I know is that I think he just wants to move on with his life. As long as this is hanging over his head, he wants to be heard. He wants everybody to know, here's what I wrote. Here's what I meant. And now you take it and, and do what you want with it. So we'll see what happens with that. By the way, billionaire businessman Mark Cuban believes everybody in the Democratic presidential field, all 23 of them, are doomed to fail Uh in a general election against Donald Trump. He could be on to something. They're all doomed, (laughs) is what he's saying. Now, he said that most of their policy ideas are headline porn to get attention. (laughs) What? Wow. Headline porn. (laughs) Well, there have been a number of headlines that we've seen the... Well, Elizabeth Warren wants to do away with, with whatever it is. One of them wants to. Is it uh, a bunch is, of them want to do away with like debt, debt, student loans? Yeah. You know the typical stuff like that, right? So it gets your attention, whatever it is. But he says, I don't think they actually believe what they're proposing is passable. Yeah, you want to throw something outrageous out there, 
get people talking about you. That's kind of the whole thing. I think a lot of people would probably say the same about Trump when he ran. I don't think he yeah. thought everything he promised was passable. Oh, of course not. It's about getting attention. I'll have something on that a little bit later on in terms of uh, – I, I saw the interview. Howard Stern's doing a lot of um, – publicity for his book. He's got a book out. He sat down with Anderson Cooper, and it's not the first time I heard it. He's repeating the same story. I mean, he knows Trump really well, and he just said that the whole thing was a publicity stunt. <laughs> I mean, kind of what we were saying from, from the get-go, that uh, the, the the person who was shocked most when the, the election was over was it's Trump. Trump. <laughs> he saw his face that night. It was like a deer in headlights. <laughs> anyway, Cuban believes that nobody can beat him. And so they're saying that they're calling for him. They're saying, well, why don't you run? Because wow. he is not a fan of uh, Donald Trump. And he is, uh, he, he's a self-made billionaire. He doesn't consider to be Trump a self-made billionaire. He considers to be Trump a uh, rich boy with uh, the spoon in of, uh, you know, silver spoon in his mouth. So Mark Cuban and, and Trump do not get along. And he says, eh, you know, I'm thinking about it. He's just throwing it out there. He's saying that if he ran, he'd run as an independent and how many times have we seen this? I mean, the, who, who does the independent help in these situations? The incumbent. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the case here. Because I think that normally I would say, yes, it's going to help Trump. It's going to knock out, you know. The uh, Democratic base. You, yeah. If this guy, what's his name? Howard uh, Schultz. Schultz from Starbucks, the former CEO of Starbucks. He was kicking around a possible run. And he would certainly help Trump because he would uh, take a little from Biden or whoever else would be the second guy in, which is going to be Biden, right? But in this case, Mark Cuban, who really doesn't – he's got some conservative values and he's got some liberal values. He's kind of right. He's, he's a centrist. You think so he'd take from Trump. He might take from Trump, which would you know, obviously help Biden in this situation. It would really hurt Trump. So I think he knows that. I think he knows. He's dangling out there going, hey, don't piss me off. <laughs> don't get on the bad side of me. You know, I mean, I got you. Don't get, you know, don't, I, you know, because you notice that Trump hasn't tweeted about him. Well, that's basically the same thing that Schultz was doing. He hasn't really come out since his original announcement, like it was maybe a couple of weeks. And the entire time he was basically saying, hey, Dems, if you put up the right person, I'm not going to bother. Yeah. He was basically trying to hold them, you know, hostage. You know, I was doing this too. Michael Bloomberg was doing this, the former mayor of New York. But he's another one, uh, you know, even though he calls him, he was a Republican and he was a Democrat and he's right down the middle. But, he, you know, he too would be a, a, a game ruiner for the Dems. But I think Cuban's the only guy, and I'll tell you why. Because not only is he down the middle, but he's also, he's... A little right. Well, but he's also considered to be like, a, it was a TV personality. So he was on Shark Tank. So everybody knows Mark Cuban from Shark Tank. And is the owner of the map. And he's a billionaire. And, you know, why did a lot of people vote for Trump? Why did he resonate with blue-collar voters when he ran? Well, because he worked on construction sites with you know, he he knew how to speak to them, he knew the lingo, and he knows how to tap into that that audience. Well, Mark Cuban is the same guy. Mark Cuban comes from the blue collar world in Pittsburgh, built himself up, and he can tell the same story. So he can go in and say, "All right, listen, here's the deal. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do it the way it was supposed to be done when this guy got in, without all the drama, with all the crap." Without all the, the nonsense, no collusion, obstruct. I'll tell you exactly how it is, and I'll do it what I say I'm going to do. You know, and uh, and he could be a spoiler. Wow. And he could also say, for each and every one of you, I'm going to give you hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> right. for a fifteen percent stake. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, like like I said, I, I I think that because he is somebody who is a television personality. That gets him halfway into the room with a lot of voters. But he could be kind of like, you know, hey, listen, man, I can make this economy even stronger without any of this nonsense. I can put more money in your pocket. He just tells the story of how he's selling newspapers when he was 14 or eight years old or whatever it was, went from door to door. Now he's a billionaire and he can go up and say, hey, at least I made my money myself. I didn't have daddy give it to me. He could do the Oof. whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he could. But will he do it? I, if I'm a betting person, 
Probably not. You know why? You said it yourself. He's a smart guy. Yeah. Was, what does he want the, the nonsense yeah, who for? Needs that. Could why you, does he doesn't need that nonsense? No, Could no. you imagine though if he does decide to run, and if then all of a sudden like Oprah decides to throw her hat in, <laughs> and the final presidential debates are Trump, Oprah, and and <laughs> Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban yeah. all up on stage debating each other. Yeah. What that would be the pinnacle of reality television. But I tell you what, I tell you what, because both uh, um, political parties suck. Both of them do that they can't get anything done. We, 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 you just look at all the dysfunction that's going on. This system doesn't work. It hasn't worked for a long time. So that's one of the reasons why the Trumpsters in there because people are like, right, we're done with this nonsense. Screw this. Let's put the uh, celebrity apprentice guy in there. Let's put the the TV host. See what he can do. And say what you want, but uh, the Trumpster has followed through on most of the stuff that he's uh, said he was going to do. I mean, how's the economy doing? Not bad, right? It's doing pretty good. Unemployment is at an all-time low. I mean, the wall, all right, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> eh, Mexico has to come across with the money. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, people will look at him and say, hey, listen, I don't, get, I don't care what kind of dude this guy is. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm happy with what's going on in my 401K, blah, 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 blah. He's following through. You know, Cuban could tell the same story, but without all the, all the nonsense. And as far as I know, I don't think he's got any skeletons. In, oh, he might. He might have a couple oh, of skeletons. Say, I guess they on. all do. Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, certainly not like, uh, you know, I mean, look at all the stuff that Trump had before he uh, yeah, was elected. Yeah, the question isn't whether his closet's clean. It's can he survive it cleaning out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but like I said, but I, I think at this point people don't care. They don't care. I mean, Trump's uh, the skeleton in his closet looked like a Halloween party <laughs> before he came in. You know what I mean? Like all sorts of stuff. Accusations of this and that. The Hollywood access Hollywood tape. But Mark Cuban, he's also a guy who's a very smart guy. He's very smart. He's very savvy. And uh, he knows how to talk to people. And I don't know, man, if he really wanted to do it, I think that could be a game changer. But he's got three kids. He's got kids, you know, 9, 12. I didn't stop Trump. Well, how many kids does he have? We still don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, I just think, you know, I'm just saying. I've heard rumors. At least four. Yeah, well, is that we know of. <laughs> That we know of. Wow. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, Mark Cuban, I think he's doing it just to kind of mess with the with the Trump's head. And uh, I think he might be succeeding. All right. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to get into uh, some TV stuff. Late night ratings came out. And for the first time, we have a new winner in the late night uh, television ratings race. We'll get to that. There's a whole bunch of other things as well. Stay right here. It's the Barsky Radio for Chad Benson right here. Don't move. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. Hey, what's happening? Barsky Radio, sitting for Chad Benson. Hope you're doing well. There's a new undisputed king of late night TV. And that would be, drum roll please... Stephen Colbert. Really? Wow. Late Show with Stephen Colbert is the uncontested ruler of late night TV. I mean, really thumping Jimmy Fallon. By uncontested. Uh, I guess because I guess the numbers are so huge. Really? Jimmy Kimmel. All right, so it's uh, it's Colbert, number one, Jimmy Fallon, the Tonight Show, number two, and Kimmel, number three. And he also stole the crown for the coveted viewers, uh, 18 to 49, according to Nielsen. This is the first time in 24 years that The Tonight Show has lost out to Colbert. Now, wow. if you've seen Colbert's show, I mean, this guy goes hard in on Trump. Yeah, I mean, uh, every night it's, 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 it's a thumping. I mean, it's a, uh, it's opening, a pummeling. It's a pummeling. His opening monologue is all Trump, and it's a long monologue. It too. goes for like a half hour. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. I mean, and, and Fallon doesn't do really much of that at all. I mean, it's mostly which, pop culture stuff. And, which would explain why he's number two. Yeah, but for a while he was number one, and they were thinking, oh, okay, apparently, you know, he's not doing the political stuff. People don't want the political stuff. Right. But... I know Kimmel does uh, goes after Trump too, but uh, Stephen Colbert just by a long shot uh, winning the uh, the categories, all the money categories, and um, interesting because 
uh, Jimmy Fallon because they, the first time in 24 years they've lost. Now they're saying, the insiders are saying that it's, they're starting to fire people. Wow. They're trying to figure things out and like what, what to do. Here's what you need to do. Uh, first of all, you got to have Fallon stop fawning over everybody like it's like they're the greatest person who ever lived. Like he's like an overexcited puppy. Yes, yes, he <laughs> is. Just got outside for the first time. Oh my God! I can't believe you know if he can have a serial killer on. You killed that many people. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's that's terrific. You know, I mean, he's just he goes just way overboard. He's a very talented guy. Uh, don't get me wrong, but still, I mean, uh, he's just not doing anything. I don't think of substance. The goofy games or whatever. It's just not working. And apparently. There's an audience that they're they're digging Colbert. Colbert is very talented too, in his own way. And then Kimmel, Kimmel's kind of like I mean he was an old radio DJ. I mean he's been around for I mean it's 20 years now almost. Wow. I think for Kimmel, which like is hard to believe. Show? Yeah, which is hard to believe. It's like 20 years I think, which just kind of snuck up on everybody. But um, yeah, he's like the wise ass guy out of all of them. But uh, but for Fallon, they're, they're, they're trying to work things out. They're they're coming up with uh, different ideas and this and that. I will tell you this: I saw some video of his show, and I think it might have been from the, the past week. But he had um, Mayor Pete on, Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> and I got to tell you something, man. Watching Fallon interview Pete Buttigieg looked like he was interviewing his younger brother. Fallon is. A, almost like a dead ringer for Pete Buttigieg. If you looked at both of them together, I swear to God, they looked like they were, they were, it was his little brother. I can kind of see it, yeah. Oh, but, you, but, but Fallon does an impression of Buttigieg, and that would really be good if Buttigieg had anybody who really cared about what he was doing. <laughs> There's like 6% of the people really care about him. How do you do an impression of him? He doesn't say or do anything to really, uh, he's got no catchphrases, he's got no... Uh, that I can tell yous, you know yeah, what I mean? Well, he's got none of, none of those, and he really didn't have a... He doesn't have anything that uh, you can, yeah, do the no. catchphrase on. But I, I think Fallon does him as just kind of like a, a laid back, very calm, collected, calm, collected yeah. guy because that's well, who every, he is. Is everything Fallon isn't? Yeah, yeah, he's Fallon. Uh, yeah, Fallon's got to take a quaalude before he does the impression <laughs> to calm himself down. A quaalude. Yeah, he's got to take like a you know whatever whatever Xanax. I mean, Xanax. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm You're showing your age. I'm showing you a reference from 1978. <laughs> I don't think anybody's taking a quaalude in like 40 years. What am I talking about? What's a quaalude? Well, uh, no, uh, I'll explain it to you later on. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, but he, it's funny. Buttigieg told a funny story about, uh, I guess he, I guess Jerry Seinfeld was doing a uh, stand-up act and, uh, in South Bend, and Buttigieg wanted to give him the key to the city. And Seinfeld didn't want to take the key to the city because he didn't want to endorse anybody politically. He didn't want to get involved. So Buttigieg went to the show. Where he was doing stand up. And at the end of the stand up, I guess, he does a QA. And Buttigieg, as the mayor, stands up and he goes, Would you accept the key to the city in front of everybody? <laughs> and, and Seinfeld had it. He was like, uh, oh, I didn't want the key to the city. I told you I don't want the key. He, no, Seinfeld could have done a whole bit like, Does this key open the door to your house? Can I go in and steal things from your house? Does, it, does this key work everywhere? I mean, he could work a whole bit there. But I thought that was actually pretty funny. <laughs> so, yeah, Colbert. We'll see how long that lasts. Colbert, king of late night, late night television. More to come. Barsky Radio, sitting for Chad Benson. Stay right where you are. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Actually, this is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. I'm Barsky, along with Ron Hersey. Our producer over there is Garrett. Welcome to the program. Appreciate you being here. So uh, let's see. Missouri Governor Mike Parson follows in the footsteps of Mississippi, Ohio, and Georgia. And he signed a bill uh, today banning abortions on or beyond the eighth week of pregnancy without exceptions for cases of rape and incest. 
making it the latest state to induce broad new restrictions on women seeking the procedure. The law, which takes effect August 28th, will punish doctors who violate the eight-week cutoff with five to 15 years in prison. Jeez. Which uh, state is, is up to 99 years? Was that uh, Georgia? One of the states uh, was like up to 99 years, I was reading. Uh, anyway, Ron, you said uh, earlier that a federal court uh, judge blocked Mississippi's heartbeat bill. It was a U.S. district judge today, this afternoon. He res- he blocked Miami's restrictive uh, abortion Miss- law. Mississippi? And... Um, Apparently there was the uh, there was one lone abortion clinic in Mississippi, only one, and they actually filed the suit, oh, okay. and the judge agreed. All right. Well, I mean, this is uh, something that'll be. Uh, I, I think it's you know you're looking at uh, not just the South. I mean, Ohio too. So obviously the uh, the thought is to overturn Roe versus Wade. I don't know if that's going to happen, but at least they're they're making noise yeah. and. Alabama's the one with the 10 to 99 years. Oh, that's Alabama. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> of course. It's Alabama. So, uh, but yeah, but that just happened this afternoon. Now, Trump's financial records, uh, this is the one thing that anything that our president cares about more than anything else is uh, everybody's seen the financial records. He'd rather see you nude. He'd rather have everybody see him nude walking up and down Fifth Avenue in New York. <laughs> He'd rather people see those P tapes. Yes, or, or Pennsylvania Avenue. You know, yeah, exactly. Hey. Right. He'd rather have all of that out and about on on the the uh, the evening news <laughs> than anybody see the uh, the financial records. And apparently, these records are from Wells Fargo, TD Bank, have been turned over to the House Democrats. And guess who's got them? Maxine Waters. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, <laughs> the one person oh. he doesn't want to. Have uh, those records in the hands of it's Maxine Waters. I no. mean, this woman can't wait to make problems and trouble. No wonder he's been a little testy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. On Wednesday, the president, uh, Donald Jr., Eric and Ivanka, and the Trump Organization lost their bid to block Deutsche Bank and Capital One Financial Corp. from uh, providing financial records to the Dems. So they got their hands on that. They still want to get the tax returns. They're not going to get that. That's not going to happen. He's going to be under audit for um, the next 50 years probably. I think Man. that's going to happen. So, uh, but, Yeah, but I saw that and I was like, okay, well, it, I guess it really is on. It really is on between our president and uh, Nancy Lagosi. That's Bella Lagosi's uh, sister <laughs> because she's a vampire. No, but Nancy Pelosi, I guess there was a video that would, they circulated. Uh, it was yesterday. It was a doctored video of her at some sort of an event, and Trump retweeted it. Did he retweet it? Yeah, he retweeted one, and then there was another that circulated around as well. There was one where they took her speech just the other day when she accused him of being uh, needing an intervention yeah. and uh, slowed it down, which is like, I mean, that's an old YouTube thing. There's tons of videos of Trump slowed down where yeah. it makes it sound like he's drunk. Uh, and then, then they also there's one where the, it's very heavily edited. There, there, there's where she stumbles and they stammer. Yeah. Just stand like everybody else does. Yeah, and uh, they they put it together and it really makes her look like she's completely out of her mind. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of like her that way to be honest. Well, with you. Yeah, she's easy, it's easy to approach her. With yeah, her. and I just think she's. Uh, I would like her like that all the time. Sexy when she's crazy type of thing. Oh, yeah, you, you, you know bet. you, you know what? There's, there's something about a woman when she gets a little tipsy but not too drunk. Could we hear a little bit of the uh, the audio? Sure. Okay. Here's Nancy. No, we're hearing the actual audio and then the doctored audio. Yeah. Okay, here's the actual audio. And then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before. But she sounds drunk there. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like she's had a couple cocktails there. Yeah, that was the normal one. Maybe that's just two martinis uh, in? That's the normal one? Yes. Okay, so uh, let's hear the this doctored is, one. This is her at 4 a.m. And then he had a, a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before. And he had a press conference in the White House and all the reporters were there. And it was really, really, he needs an intervention. And I need another vodka gimmick, please. If you don't mind. <laughs> I'm just saying that would uh, that would actually make it uh, more interesting to me. 
if she was like that all the time. So anyway, so the, the, I guess everybody bought into it. Like two million oh my users God. saw the video and they were just sharing it and saying, can you believe that well, Pelosi was hammered? Didn't help that Trump shared it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, of course he was. And he, uh, he was standing by it. He's always going to share it. But there, these two... These two need to, seriously, I mean, they need to get a room. Yeah, they do. They got to get a, like, she's got to get a pass from her husband, <laughs> and he's got to get a pass from Melania, and they just, just get just it over seven with. Seven minutes in heaven? Yeah, just, just do well, it. How much? What is it? Seven, seven minutes in heaven. You ever heard that? Y- yeah. Oh. No, you, we're talking about the president. Do you remember Stormy Daniels' story? This is more like a minute and a half. <laughs> oh, wow. took seven minutes in heaven. What are you talking about? <laughs> you. Well, I'm just telling I'm just I saying. I giving him, like, six minutes to warm yeah, up you're, 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 <laughs> six minutes. Yeah, you're six minutes to drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> then another minute to seal the deal. Oh, man, yeah. You're rough. Yeah. Well, wow. I'm just saying from what I know. Wow. So anyway, so um <laughs> yeah, this was shared. It's all over the place now and uh, a version posted by the conservative politics watchdog a conservative group on Facebook has been viewed more than 1.8 million times. <laughs> Shared more than thirty nine thousand times, has more than twenty thousand comments. But here's the thing, though: Does it really matter? I mean, like, you know, the the, the people that are reading it and they're uh, they're thinking, okay, well, well, what else is new? Right. Let me, let me tell you something. Half those people there in Washington, half those lawmakers, by one o'clock are in the bag. By one. <laughs> All right. By eleven. What am I Thank talking you. about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 most of them go for the liquid lunch early, so it's not a shocker. See, if I'm Nancy Pelosi, I would do something actually funny. I would do my next press conference, and I'd pretend to be hammered. <laughs> or actually get really hammered. <laughs> so or you could go out there and fast talk like an auctioneer, so that way when they slow it down this time, it'll just sound like you're normal. No, believe me, she's not going to be able to talk fast at all. She, does, she sounds like, and when she talks to you, she's so soft-spoken. But it's it's not just soft spoken. It's also like firm. It's well, like you're getting scolded, but they're not raising their voice. You know what I mean? Well, she knows how to do that. <laughs> Some years of being in the uh, dom- dominatrix like, business. I was thinking more like an angry grandma, but whatever. No, I'm saying there's like a dungeon below the Capitol. I'm telling you, <laughs> Chucky e. Schumer's been a bad boy today, hasn't he? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that uh, is still going, and they're really going at it. I mean, the thing that sent him off was when she said that he was covering up everything, that, that she was not going to impeach, but he's definitely guilty of a cover-up. And then uh, he was just like, well, she's lost it. She's out of her mind. And, I don't wear cover-up. I don't yeah, wear makeup. Right. Well, I don't wear cover-ups. Well, I, I think there's plenty of cover-up there. So, all right, so... Um, I mentioned Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg is the guy who seems to be, he's he's least making noise uh, aside from, you know, uh, Pelosi. He's making noise. The other candidates really, I mean, I haven't heard anything from Cory Booker. Sanders is he's kind of died out a little bit. Buttigieg is doing, he did the Fox Town Hall, which was smart. Why would you want to get uh, in the enemy's territory and try to convince some people of your, you know, your policies? You got standing ovation. You got a standing ovation at the end of it. So, all right. So he's actually being more proactive, and he's re- and he's going after Trump big time this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. So he, uh, I guess yesterday, he accused the president of posing as a disabled American in order to escape the Vietnam War draft. The bone now, spurs thing. The bone yeah. spurs thing. Yeah. I mean, he's going, going right after that. And uh, you know that Trump is, is going to take offense to that in a big way. I just don't think he knows how to handle him yet because he— well, uh, he's got to be careful because this guy's a veteran. He's a Middle Eastern veteran. I mean, he's right. been over he's, in, he's, you know— He's been there. Yeah. He's been there. So, But I think Trump wants to give him some nicknames, but yes, fake Trump. Well, I got a couple of nicknames I'd like to use, but I don't think they're going to go over well if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I, so I think, I'm thinking he's kind of— He's kind of dealing with Buttigieg the same way he'd be dealing with Kamala Harris and some others. I think he's got to be careful how he – and, yeah, because he is a, a war vet. So, anyway, so Buttigieg said yesterday during a Washington Post event that uh, Trump um, should have followed 2.7 million other Americans into active duty. He says, I have a pretty dim view of his decision to use privileged status to fake a disability in order to avoid serving in Vietnam, he says. 
Later, Buttigieg had lived a comparison between himself and the real estate tycoon with the lengthy TV, uh, TV pedigree. He says, I don't have a problem standing up to somebody who was working on season seven of Celebrity Apprentice when I was packing my bags for Afghanistan. <laughs> How do you come back from that wow. if you're the Trumpster? That's what I'm saying. Packing That's heat. a tough one. Yep. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's very, you know, he's very um, likable, this guy, and he doesn't look like he can mix it up, but apparently he's not afraid to do it now. I mean, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's Trump going to say? How does Trump defend himself on this one? Asked if he thought that Trump actually faked the disability, he shot back. He says, do you believe he has a disability? Is exactly what he did, he said. He faked it. it was, uh, he said uh, he manipulated the ability to get a diagnosis. And he said, if you were a conscientious objector, I admire that. He says, but this is something different. This is somebody who I think fairly obviously the most of us took advantage of the fact that he was the child of a multimillionaire in order to pretend to be disabled so nobody uh, could go to war in his place. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, uh, fake Trump wants to jump on. Yes, fake Trump. I don't know what the hell but a judge. What's his name? But a judge? What he was saying. But, but sure, yeah, yeah, he went to Afghanistan. But was he ever in real danger? Was he ever in combat? I say no. I'll tell you what real danger is. Try maneuvering between a few hundred drunk, coked-up people on the dance floor at Studio 54 in the 70s. Better you try having sex with three or four of these broads the same night, the next morning waking up all itchy, not knowing what the hell's going on. I'm telling you, I feel for my brothers who fought in the jungles of Vietnam, but in the 70s and 80s, I too avoided a number of landmines, if you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Chlamydia, gonorrhea. All in the urban jungle. Exactly. Herpes. That was just a few of those. That, well, actually, they were strippers from scores, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So I guess it's not only on with Pelosi and uh, Trump. It's also on with the Buttigieg as well. He's not holding back. All right. Uh, we have a lot more to get to. I want you to stay right where you are. We come back. What's up with the cause? What's he been doing? We mentioned him a little earlier, but how's he handling prison? I'll tell you all about that coming up. Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Stay here. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Barsky Radio. That's us for Chad Benson. Hope you're doing well. This is a great story here. And uh, it never happens to any one of us. But this will be one of those stories that it only happens to one person, but it's it's too good to pass up. So listen to this. So this Massachusetts man recently returned home to uh, make a horrifying discovery. Somebody had broken into his home. Do you guys ever have anybody break into your home? Uh, not that I can think I of. a car broken into, but... Yeah. Never my house. I got two stories here, a quick story before I get to this. So uh, I was a kid. I'm, I don't know, maybe 16, something like that. And I come downstairs, and uh, the TV is gone, <laughs> and our dog is nowhere to be found. Oh, no. And so I go up to uh, my dad and say, hey, Dad, did you take uh, the TV in to be re- uh, repaired? He says, no. I said, we've been robbed. <laughs> And so I started looking around for the dog, and they they put the dog in the closet. They, oh. they gave him a a knockout pill, you know. Oh, no, well, no at least than... they didn't take the dog. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that was the first time. And then the second time it happened to me was when I was uh, a music radio DJ. My first one of my first jobs up in Rochester. I lived in a garden apartment, which is kind of below you know the ground, and uh, it's probably three o'clock in the morning, and the window just. You know, is open, and I see a leg coming into my bedroom. <laughs> this guy stepping down, and uh, then another leg comes in, and this guy's just standing there in my bedroom. Thought he was in some other apartment, I think. And I slept nude, by the way. <laughs> so oh. for some reason, I got up and started, I said, get that, you know, leap out of here. And uh, he takes off, and I'm running after him with nothing on. I mean, what am I, I going to hit him with? <laughs> Believe me. Not much. Not carrying a bag. Yeah, with you. yeah, right. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it's a weird feeling when that happens. But imagine coming home, you've been broken into. But I'll let the guy tell the story. Here he is from Massachusetts. It's terrifying just to know that somebody was in your house, but they they scrubbed everything down, did the shower, did the toilets. These 
toilet paper roses were left on my <laughs> toilet paper rolls. Nothing had been taken other than just being rearranged and cleaned. Nate uh, tells us his five and a half year old son. He's like, Daddy, Daddy, you think they'll come back? And I, you know, <laughs> just, finish the kitchen? Finish the kitchen, right? Yeah, that'd be something. This is still a B&E. It's just for misdemeanor because it didn't appear that there was any intent to steal or take anything from the property. <laughs> So basically what happened was uh, somebody went in and cleaned the whole place up, spotless. Wow. And, you know, if I really think about it, it might have been, it had to be a maid or a maid service that thought they were in the wrong place. You know what I mean? They just came oh, to the yeah. wrong house by accident. They got the wrong house by accident. Or but just, how would they have gotten in? They, maybe they, he left the door open? I don't know. I mean, uh, they, who knows? Yeah, I, I remember. It's so funny you mentioned that. I remember when I, I lived in uh, Virginia. I lived in Virginia Beach for a while, and I had an apartment. And I came home from uh, the radio station one afternoon. I walked in, and there's a brand-new kitchen countertop. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, when did this happen? <laughs> and I called the office. I'm like, um, I gave him my apartment number. I'm like, is there a reason why I have a new kitchen counter? And she's she texts her goes, "Oh my god, they went to the wrong place." <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's either that or just somebody was in his place probably a week before at a party. Go, this place is disgusting. I was gonna say, I'm gonna it's break in and I'm gonna clean it. Family member, or yeah, friend. yeah. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Come in, have a seat. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, stand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you want to know about the cause? Uh, everybody's wondering, well, how's Cos doing? How's Bill Cosby doing in jail? He's in prison. He's been in there for. How long now? Like almost a year, maybe even more? It's got to be getting close. Got to be getting close. Oh, yeah. So so the cause is in jail, and I guess he's he's doing okay, but I will give you the uh, full rundown because from what I understand, he is um, he's kind of got the – he's getting the star treatment. And I, th- I thought maybe in prison he wouldn't be getting the star treatment, but everybody's calling him Mr. Cosby, and, and he's still doing bits, still doing jokes. I would have to think, you know, if you've ever sat through a Bill Cosby monologue, especially towards the end of his <laughs> his 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 run, the one that just goes for like four hours, I have to think maybe the warden's using that as some sort of a uh, you know a, uh, a deterrent to keep these guys from uh, you know getting a little uh, rambunctious and starting a problem. But I'll tell you a little bit more about exactly how he's doing, what he's doing. We'll do that coming up. And I got some uh, some school stories coming up. Stay right here. Barsky for Chad Benson. Don't worry. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It's actually Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. He's got the uh, time off for Memorial Day weekend. I hope you have a good one. So uh, what's our Cosby, uh, Bill Cosby, doing up? What's he doing? What's going on? How's he handling prison? Is he uh, getting into it? Is he enjoying it? Enjoying his time away? Good, good meal. I got to get away from Camille. She was making me crazy. Camille. <laughs> Remember, all he heard about was Camille. Camille. Did she divorce him yet, by the way? I don't think so. I thought she was getting divorced or something. And this guy's going to be, by the time he gets out, he's going to be, what is he, 81? It'll be like 91 if he gets out. So why bother divorcing him now? Just outlive him. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, that's probably the best way to go. Anyway, a Pennsylvania judge snubbed all of Bill Car- Cosby's arguments past week for an appeal in a lengthy new opinion that the comedian his wife blasted as racist. Judge Stephen O'Neill, who presided over the sex assault charge and a trial led, um, that led to Cosby's conviction last year, said in his 143-page response, wow. that's, a, that's a hell of a response. Had a lot to get off his chest. That Cosby showed a chilling and signature pattern of predatory behavior and his prison sentence of three to ten years should stand. So they're trying to they're trying to spring him. So I don't know what the problem is. Um, I, 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 why would you, if you're Camille, why would you want him out? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure she's doing fine on her own. The, the money's still there, right? The last I heard, she wasn't even refused to see him in, in prison. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. I don't really understand that. 
So uh, I guess uh, their spokesman, Cosme and Camille, uh, was, was, they guess, I guess the, they have a spokesman who's speaking on their behalf. And they just said, Judge O'Neill, with a great deal of help from the media, has tried to turn Bill Cosby into one of the most uh, insidious stereotypes of African-American men. The brutal black buck. Ooh. I'm the brutal black buck, you see. <laughs> brutal black buck. What a what? Who said that? This is the this is the uh, the, the attorney sp- spokesperson. Good yeah. Lord. The brutal black buck. Oh. There's a term from 1958. Great day. You see the the brutal <laughs> black buck would come in and he would take it off his way with the women by putting the roofies in the drink. You see. <laughs> No, I don't think that was the case. There has nothing to do with being black. It has to do with being a freaking pervert. Wow. That's what it has to do with. It has, to, it has to do with being disturbed and being a sexual predator. It has nothing. I just love when these people try to turn uh, the, the obvious into the and in, in, in playing the race card in this one or the victim. The victim. <laughs> I can't even imagine if, how you could make this guy out to be the victim. The whole thing is just bizarre. So uh, yeah, they got they got slapped down, and uh, for good reason. I can't believe that the guy uh, wrote a, a 143 page response. I, I I would have like one paragraph. What are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal black buck. What are you nuts? Just one word. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. No, it would actually be LOL. That would have been my response. <laughs> LMAO. Yeah, right. So uh, Cosby, I guess he's, he's very pampered in prison. They're saying here that um, according to some of his uh, former prison mates who are out now, he's now known as inmate NN7687. And... Uh, I guess some of the prison guards were starstruck when he first got in there. Well, I mean, it's not yeah, every day you course, see yeah. Bill Cosby in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to act. But I think he was expecting room service or something. You know, cause it, <laughs> well, I mean, the guy was Bill Cosby. Well, they kind of give him room service. They do bring him meals, I assume. I asked for a French dip sandwich, and I got the P and J, you see, and I don't like that at all, you see. That's not what I ordered. <laughs> What kind of place is this? Where's his Jello pudding pop? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they even made that available for him. I don't think he even eats those. I don't think he ever ate them. To be quite honest, <laughs> with you. It's a big... yeah, it's a big, yeah, just scam, a total scam. So they're saying that the, the Cos spends his time in prison cracking jokes. Well, of course, he's Bill Cosby to make other inmates uh, inmates laugh and relies on his wheelchair to get about. Wow. So he has his wheelchair. Yeah, he's eighty one, and I. Is he still blind or did he get his sight sight uh, back? Did that... <laughs> I know that was part of the deal when he was in, tr- in the trial. He said, I keep him blind. You see, I can't see. You see, and I don't know the difference between a roofie and an anvil. You see. <laughs> I believe he had a studio audience with him when he went to uh, the trial. They just wanted to just follows him around. Just follows him around because you need that to make him funnier. If he just does his jokes, he's not that funny. Suppose he's, like, uh, uh, making jokes for the inmates. What did the woman say to Bill Cosby after he gave her a roofie? Nothing, because she was unconscious, you see. <laughs> What's the difference between a roofie and an Advil? I can't see, you see. Forty years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. I'm going to write that down. The difference between the roofie and the anvil is 40 years. And I'll give credit to Ron Ursa for that one, you'll see. Nice. Yeah, Finally yeah. sold a joke. Yeah, to a guy who can't use it. I can't pay. Can't pay. I got no money, you see, because Camille's got it. But I would have paid handsomely for that one. You're 40 years too late, you'll see. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, what the cause has been up to. I guess he's uh, doing as best as he can, and uh, maybe we'll see him another time. Who knows? So, oh, speaking of racists, it's, uh, he, they were claiming that the judge was racist in their, in their case. Teachers at a California high school have sparked outrage after appearing in yearbook photos wearing sombreros and sporting fake mustaches. Oh, I saw this. come on. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a high school that with 60%... Uh, Latino uh, students. It's in the South, I assume? No, no, no. It's in California. Oh. Well, 
Uh, Southern California? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, yeah, I guess it's probably close to San Diego. So anyway, the image has set off a firestorm that depicts seven teachers from the World Language Department, six of whom have been sporting wide-brim Mexican-style hats and ponchos. By the way, if you were a, if you were a, a sombrero, it's funny. I, mean, I don't really. It doesn't really matter who you are. There's a reason they put them on your head on your birthday. Yeah. in the Mexican restaurant, right? So they, because you look ridiculous. Yeah, and they take a picture of you, and they'll post, you know what I'm saying. Everybody looks funny in a sombrero, right? And a poncho too. Throw and the poncho on you. These guys even had fake like droopy mustaches. Yeah, and they were like puffing on some kind of a weird looking pipe. I didn't quite get that part. Yeah, no, I don't know. Who knows? The two male Spanish teachers in the group have the uh, the honor of being senor before their names, while the four female colleagues carried the title senora. But here's the thing: where it kind of evens it out, it doesn't make it as racist as you think it is. One of the teachers, a French instructor. Millie's Lowers is depicted wearing a black beret, matching gloves and dark sunglasses, and laughing at a, um, a Jerry Lewis movie. <laughs> um, why does that make it less racist? Uh, well, cause it, cause, because because the French people are white, is that why? Well, no, French people with berets. It's nothing racist about that. But I mean, the when you when you're dealing with the it's a caricature I, I, of the care of it, France. I think Garrick's on to something. To be honest with you, what? you I think, think he's on to something. You think so? Yes, absolutely. What a French person with a beret? You think that's but offensive? No, no, no. I'm not. saying I mean, he's saying that person is white. The French person is white, and yeah. the others are brown, and so no one's outraged about making fun of the white person. No one cares about the, the, white the person. Hat. Here's yeah. No, wait a second. Here's the difference. The difference is... 40 years. No, no, no. no. You already did that job. <laughs> the difference is the, the, the stereo... Like, you, know, you would see a Latina or a Latino person with a sombrero. Th- that is akin to... Boy, I don't even want to say it. But, but you know, it, it's, it, that appears to be more racist than... Depicting a French person, whether they're white or black, I don't know if they're white or black. Uh, it says the French instructor could be a black person wearing a, uh, a beret with, you know, a matching gloves and dark sunglasses, like there's some sort but, of bohemian French, Frenchy, you know, French sure. teacher. You know, so, you know, but the you problem. Know. French stereotypes, you know. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is, is the intent is exactly the same. They're dressing up like the stereotype of a different. Uh, group or or in, or whether it be ethnic or or just cultural yeah. differences, they, they're making light of of stereotypes. Can I they... tell you, I have I have I don't have a problem making fun of French people. Because... <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. People don't have a problem with doing it because, for the most part, you think of French people; they're mostly white, right? But but when we do it to people who are not white, whether they be you know Mexican or whatever, now all of a sudden it's a problem. It's a problem either way. Yeah. They shouldn't have done any of it. All right. Settle down, Jesse Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you're the, the uh, head of the Rainbow Cover. And I can't believe I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> right. All right. So um, a, a couple of quick stories here. Since we're on the topic of school and teens, uh, an Arizona teen wins a car for perfect attendance at school. Six students with perfect attendance. That, that, seriously, if I knew I was going to get a car... When I was graduating, I wouldn't have skipped school as much as I did. <laughs> it was something to work toward. So six students with perfect attendance at East Valley Institute of Technology in Mesa, Arizona, faced off in a contest with the winner taking home a Chrysler PT Cruiser. That's a pretty good... Uh, you think? Yeah, it's that's a okay. pretty good... I don't red. know about that. What? What do you think? You know what a PT Cruiser is, right? It's not exactly the... Uh, Okay, 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 okay. Have you ever heard this term? Beggars can't be <laughs> choosers? All of a sudden, I'm sitting here with like, I'm not going to take a car. These guys are riding their bikes to school. If, if you've seen as many of those things on the shoulder of the road with the flashers on as I have, yeah, you'd about, be like, no thanks. Yeah. I'll, I'll stay with the bike. Stay with the bike. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, I'm not, s- it's not like they're going to win a Bentley. You know what I mean? No, but like, yeah, a car is a Ford or something. something Come dependable on. would be good a car is a car oh god listen Cars to us today yeah right lord all right a uh there's another story a teenager from tennessee is inspiring many after earning more than three million dollars in college scholarships oh as uh and but here's the thing the great thing about this story he's homeless he was homeless no he was the high school valedictorian. He was homeless in his senior year following the death of his father, Tupac, Tupac Mosley. A Raleigh, Egypt high school graduate became homeless. He and his family were evicted from their home. This would derail anybody 
but not this guy. This guy had a 4.3 GPA, remained at the top of his class, and uh, he had no place to live. He was living in shelters. He hoped to receive at least $1 million in scholarships and uh, even surprised himself when he surpassed all of his goals, $3 million in scholarships. That is pretty damn impressive. Pretty I impressive. I just like, wrote back to him and said, can I take a check? <laughs> Yeah, we we write back and hey, for the hell with the scholarships. I need a place to live. Give me a million for a for a house, and then we can figure the rest out. I'm thinking maybe that's not a bad idea. All right, we uh, we will come back in a matter of moments, and uh, we will actually pay tribute to those who gave the up the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms because it is Memorial Day weekend. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Don't move. Stay here. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Chad's got the uh, show off. He's taking the show off. I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio, along with Ron Hersey and our producer, Garrett. And it is Memorial Day weekend. And um, before we get into that, are you aware that God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood is 35 years old today of all days? 35 years. That uh, that song is replaced pretty much. I mean, it could replace the national anthem. It's one of those songs that it's its own entity, basically. You could you could say the most un-American thing in a speech and have that play in, and everybody would forgive what you just said. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, just listen to, to, to this song. I mean, this song is... And I'm proud to be an American. Man, if you have one hit in you, this is the one you want. <laughs> this guy has made an entire career out of this song. I, when he goes out, I mean, he makes an appearance, right? Lee Greenwood, he puts on that 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 uh, flag jacket, right. that leather jacket, and he goes out and makes an appearance. He sings the song, you know, uh, and it's a it's a it's like a an ATM machine for him. <laughs> and I'm proud to be an American. Pay me in check or in cash. Oof. And then <laughs> he's not even hanging around. He just sings the damn song and moves on. I mean, it, like I said, if you had to pick one song to write in your lifetime yeah, to be able to, 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 to this, that's the one. Never I used, have to do a full set again. <laughs> I, used to, I used to joke around about. I used, I used to joke around when Obama was in office, and, and everybody was talking about, oh, uh, you know, he was born in Kenya, and uh, you know, he's a Muslim. Where's and the this, birth certificate? Yeah, where's the birth certificate? All that stuff. I mean, he could have gotten up, and uh, he could have said, uh, "Got a couple things to say. A couple things. Number one, I was born in Kenya. Number two, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Friends with Bill Air." And I'm proud to be in America. Right behind them, they were like, they'd be like, "Why? We, we just hated you two seconds ago. We can't hate you now." So uh, yeah, so today is uh, really the beginning of. Uh, they're saying it's the beginning of summer, but it's more than that. Memorial Day. Do you know that 55 percent of Americans, only 55 percent of Americans know the real meaning of Memorial Day? Can you believe that? Really? Yeah, I can. Believe yep. That. Sure. They did a survey. Only 55% got it right when they asked it. But 27% thought it was a day honoring all military veterans, both living and dead. No, it's called Memorial Day. <laughs> a memorial. You know what a memorial is? Uh, the survey also found 21% of people were planning to fly a flag at half staff on Memorial Day. 20 will go to a parade or an event. 18% will visit the grave of someone who died when they were serving in the military. That's and... I don't know. Uh, did did your dad serve? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, my dad uh, did not serve, but my uncle did. My uncle Hash was in World War II. He was uh, in the invasion of Normandy. Wow. And he's got. He had some stories. He told me a story once. He told me my brother and my cousin were at some sort of an event. He's no longer with us. God rest his soul. But he told the story of how he was over in um, 
in Germany. And, uh, you know, he was fighting the Nazis. And he, there was a soldier who had just been shot, was dead, Nazi soldier. And he went up to him just to make sure that he was still dead and they had to move on. And my, my uncle's initials were HB for Harry. Harry, but we call him Hash, Harry Barsky. And he noticed that the guy had a ring on his hand. It had the initials HB. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> So if he's telling me the story, I'm thinking, okay, well, where is this going? Oh, no. And I um, I know. and <laughs> so he said he tried to get the ring off the guy's finger to take the ring with him because, you know, he said, hey, these are my initials. Souvenir. It's a souvenir. It's my initials. <laughs> you know, what's the problem? And uh, he said, uh, if, you know, he, I guess Rigor Mortis had already said, and you know, I guess the guy had been dead for a while, couldn't get the ring off. So I thought, all right, well, uh, so that's it. You missed out. Yeah, he didn't. no, he didn't. He, <laughs> I said, what happened, Uncle Hash? He goes, ah, I just took a knife, just chopped the finger off. and took Jeez. The... <laughs> I said, Uncle Hash, I could have gone literally two lifetimes without hearing that story. <laughs> seriously. Oh, man. Well, seriously, if you see a war veteran, you somebody that's going to be out and about uh, collecting money, go up, shake a hand, say thank you for your service. It really will make their day and make their week. Have a great Memorial Day. Enjoy uh, family, and, but remember what it's all about. This is the Chad Benson Show.